Well, it's that time of year again. While we won't be strolling on Hollywood Boulevard, we will be strolling along West Street and Main Street in Annapolis for the 12th annual Annapolis Film Festival. From April 4th through the 7th, you can enjoy more than 70 films, Q&A sessions with filmmakers, panels, coffee chats, and yes, plenty of parties as well. Tickets and passes are on sale right now at annapolisfilmfestival.org. But right now, we're going to give you a taste of things to come as we chat with the movers, the shakers, directors, and producers for the 12th annual Annapolis Film Festival. That's why she tried to be so hard. Well, again, the Annapolis Film Festival is rolling into town April 4th through April 7th, barreling down on us, and everybody should get their tickets at annapolisfilmfestival.org. Right now, we're talking with a, um, I'm not sure how I would order this, but a Winning America's Cup tactician and ESPN and NBC commentator will be taking care of the uh, Olympics this summer in France, a National Sailing Hall of Fame inductee and president, chairman of our own Annapolis Film Festival, and a bon vivant around the town of Annapolis, Gary Jobson. How are you? I'm very good. That was quite an introduction. Thank you very much. I like the Bon Vivant, you know? Yeah, it sounds good. I'll, <laughs> I'll stick it on my resume. There, there you go. You are the chairman of the board for the Annapolis Film Festival, but that's not why we're talking to you. You have such a broad background in sailing, and you are bringing another film to the Annapolis Film Festival and the Sailing Showcase called Unfurling the World. And it sounds like a really fascinating film and it's a documentary. So we want to talk about it a little bit. Well, thank you very much. So this was a project that I was commissioned to do on behalf of the Mystic Seaport Museum. And they had in their archives about 300 hours of film footage from Irving and Electa Johnson who did seven trips around the world between 1933 and 1959. And they had two vessels, both named Yankee, about 90 feet in length. And they took young people between the ages of 16 and 24 on these 18-month trips. And then they would have 18 months off in between. And they did lectures and articles for National Geographic and other publications and really made quite a nice business. Uh, it all came to a crashing halt to World War II. And Irving Johnson became a lieutenant commander in the Navy and helped with the Pacific Theater because he knew all those islands. But anyway, all this footage was there. It took me a year to get it all screened and digitized and cataloged. And happily, Electa, his wife, had these logs that she had detailed notes with fascinating script writing that took me about a month to learn how to read. <laughs> it was like reading a different language at first, but they were great tales. And they had the foresight to have a cameraman on all seven voyages. The first three were in black and white. The next four were in color. And I pieced it together on their trip around the world. And after I got done editing. I went back and I interviewed eight of the kids that had done these trips who were now in their 70s and 80s. And I think one of them was actually 91 who had done one of the earlier trips. And they looked back on it as one of the most defining moments in their young lives and how it helped them. They called Irving Skipper. They loved the couple. And she was very much engaged. They had two sons who... Uh, eventually did the trips around the world, four years old, six years old, on the vessel. So they grew up going on the trips well. And one of the sons is still alive, and I interviewed him. He is now 87, <laughs> So, but he, re he uh, remembers it fondly. This sounds so, like a real snapshot back into a different world. It, it really is, because... Uh, when Yankee arrived at many of these places, it was the first time an American yacht had ever pulled into the harbor or the port. And, oh, my God, they saw cannibals and met all kinds of people. And they were welcome on some islands and people throwing rocks at them at other islands. And, and, you know, they went to the Galapagos before people went to the Galapagos. They went to all of these islands. I, I interviewed this one woman uh Julie Nicholson. Julie, so of all the islands you visited, what was the most interesting? She says, Bali. Ah, why Bali, I ask. Well, I fell in love with the lead dancer in the temple, she says. <laughs> in fact, she goes on, I ended up 
getting off the boat for a month. And when the boat came back, I got back on the boat. She pauses, my camera's running, and I'm thinking, I don't say anything here. And she says, but two years later, the dancer showed up in Boston, and the romance wasn't as good in Boston as it had been in Bali. And then she says, oh, you're not putting this in a film, are you? Oh, yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what but a it just, tremendous what a story. story. Well, yeah, you can just see her going back in time when she was 18 years old. And she, I was on the fifth voyage, and how, it, you know, right after World War II, and she's thinking about this guy that she met, and then the guy shows up in Boston. Oh dear, <laughs> this isn't good. Oh gosh. So, well, what what was their impetus? Why did they bring children along on these on these sailing well, voyages? I mean, was this a altruistic thing, it. or was it okay? It, it, it was it was a money making venture. Uh, I never did find out how much the kids' families paid, but I could tell that the kids were probably pretty well off that they could afford 18 months and they would have supplies shipped wherever they ended up. And, uh, you know, they, they went out of um, Gloucester, Massachusetts, and they returned to Gloucester always exactly on time. And one of the kids that went was Sterling Hay Hayden. Sterling became quite an actor uh, in films. And you might recall he was in The Godfather when the Corleone boy goes into the bar with the gun. He's, he's the guy at the table who's the police chief that gets shot. Okay. <laughs> so, and that was Ster Sterling was on Yankee as one of the crew. And there's all kinds of stories. There was a state senator for Virginia that did. And there was an author that did it. There was a guy that ended up being an admiral in the Navy that did it. Uh, so they all had their different stories. And how lucky that this footage was sitting there. And uh, like I said, it took me a year to digitize it all. And then once I got going with it, it really was another year to piece it all together and then to consolidate it down. The film's 77 minutes, an hour and 17 minutes long. But did you have a tough time finding the kids that had, I say the kids, the, yes. the 70 and 90 year olds that sailed on the ship? Yes. Yes, I did. It, it, Mystic helped me and Google search helped me. And, you know, some of these people, you know, who the hell are you? Why are you calling me? And then I would say, well, I want to, I'm doing a film on Irving and Electa Johnson's trips and Yankees. And suddenly, oh, where can we do the interview? I'm available. They were so enthusiastic to talk about it. Uh, so that, that really made it fun. And then, you know, that, now I, you know, I sit there and they're ready to go for four or five hours. And, you know, I basically needed about five minutes per person for the film. Yeah, so it was hard to find them. But once I did, like I said, I, I got to eight of them. And that seemed to be about enough. How old were these guys when they did this? Were they like teenagers? Between the, age, the youngest was 16 and the oldest uh, was 24. They were high school to college kids. And, you know, a lot of them had finished high school. They took a year, a year and a half off to do this. And then they went on to college or did their career. But like I said, it was life defining for all of them. And they got themselves in all kinds of weird things. They visited a, uh, they visited a volcano that erupted about a week after they were there and you know, caught all kinds of fish, and most of them weren't sailors before they got on the boat. But by the time they got home, they were really skilled at it. Have you sailed personally any of the waters that these voyages took? I have. Um, I've sailed the Pacific, and I've gone south and uh, the Orient, and you know, I've been to Singapore and Australia and New Zealand, and there, there's some challenging waters. Irving was smart. You know, he often took the trade routes which the clipper ships did, so they were often reaching and going downwind, not so much upwind in these old schooners that they had. Well, one of the Yankees, the sister ship is named Tabor Boy, and it's at the Tabor Academy in Marion, Massachusetts, a sister exact replica, and it's a, it's called a topsail schooner. And, it, you know, it sails pretty well. You know, it sounds like it would be a fantastic tour, sailing tour, that you could, uh, you know, go and say, hey, let's recreate the voyage of Irving and Electa Johnson. Wouldn't it be cool? That's a really, I hadn't thought about that. Big good idea to get a vessel and recreate it. And because all the log books are there. And in the film, what I tried to do was only visit each of their destinations one time. So each segment is around seven or eight minutes. Remember, there's seven trips. So there's seven or eight minutes per trip. And I do a little bit when he's. He was in Hawaii when uh, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. He was there in Pearl Harbor. And I did find an interview with Irving Johnson and uh, included that. And I also included some of the footage that he shot on the Peking 
when it rounded Cape Horn uh, in 100 knots of wind. And this knucklehead, Irving, <laughs> went up the rigging with a black and white 8 millimeter movie camera, didn't tell the captain he's doing it, 100 knot winds, and went and shot the decks awash with water. And thank goodness he did it because it's really remarkable footage. And Irving had this goal to sail on every type of vessel. And one of them was Shamrock, the boat that challenged for the America's Cup in 1930. And he got aboard Shamrock to take it back to Europe. And while he was in Europe, he met this girl, Electa, who was a Smith College graduate. And they eventually got married and sailed across. And she was a enthusiastic and that's why they got this vessel and uh organized these trips it's a, a fun film unfurling the world will be showing i don't know what is this a premiere at the annapolis film festival yeah it hasn't been shown before so it's at two it's at noon on saturday at maryland hall and it's up in the main theater so the seats are yes. comfortable for you and everything else it runs about 77 minutes and this is part of the sailing showcase and i'm sure that you're going to be there and answering questions and i am everything else little, on the end of that yeah i'll do a little round ta table after well i do suggest that everybody go get your film passes get your film tickets you can get them at annapolisfilmfestival.org i do recommend you get the passes that's the easier way to go because you just zip right in and zip right out and again the annapolis film festival coming into town a April 4th, which is opening night, through the 7th, which is Sunday, we'll have the best of the fest and everything else. Always a good time. Can't wait to see Unfurling the World, uh, directed and uh, actually put all together by Gary Jobson, local right here in Annapolis. And I want to thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Well, thank you, John, and keep up the good work on I in Annapolis. Appreciate it. And remember, passes and tickets for the Annapolis Film Festival are available right now at annapolisfilmfestival.org. I've got mine, you get yours, and I'll see you at the movies. It doesn't matter who you are, there are stars in every city, in every house and on every street.
to it. Well, again, the Annapolis Film Festival is rolling into town April 4th through April 7th, barreling down on us, and everybody should get their tickets at annapolisfilmfestival.org. But right now, we're talking with a, um, I'm not sure how I would order this. But I'm very good. That was quite American, an introduction. Thank you very much. An ESPN uh, and NBC commentator will be taking care of the uh, Olympics this summer in yep, France. Sounds good. I'll, I'll a National Sailing Hall resume. of Fame inductee and president, chairman of our own Annapolis Film Festival, and a bon vivant around the town of Annapolis, Gary Jobson. How are you? The bon, I, I like the bon vivant. You know, that's not a bad thing to be if you have to be things. <laughs> there, there you go. Well, you are the chairman well, of the much. board so for the Annapolis Film Festival, that but that's not why we're talking to you. Um, you have such a and they broad background in, in sailing, and you are bringing another film to the film Annapolis Film Festival and the Sailing and Showcase called Johnson, Unfurling the World. And it sounds like a really fascinating the world film. It's a documentary. Um, so we want to talk about it a little bit. And they had two vessels, both named Yankee, about 90 feet in length, and they took young people between the ages of 16 and 24 on these 18-month trips. And then they would have 18 months off in between. And they did lectures and articles for National Geographic and other publications and really made quite a nice business out of it. Uh, it all came to a crashing halt to World War II. And Irving Johnson became a lieutenant commander in the Navy and helped with the Pacific Theater because he knew all those islands. But anyway, all this footage was there. It took me a year to get it all screened and digitized and cataloged. And happily, Electa, his wife, had these logs that she had detailed notes with fascinating script writing that took me about a month to learn how to read. It was like reading a different language at first, but they were great tales. And they had the foresight to have a cameraman on all seven voyages. The first three were in black and white. The next four were in color. And I pieced it together on their trip around the world. And after uh, I got done editing, <laughs> I went back and I interviewed eight of the kids that had done these trips who were now in their 70s and 80s. And I think one of them was actually 91 who had done one of the earlier trips. And they looked back on it as one of the most defining moments in their young lives and how it helped them. They called Irving Skipper. They loved the couple. And she was very much engaged. engaged. They had two sons who uh, eventually did the trips around the world, four years old, six years old, on the vessel. So they grew up going on the trips well. And one of the sons is still alive, and I interviewed him. He is now 87, <laughs> so, but he re, he uh, remembers it fondly. So, it, it really is because uh, when Yankee arrived at many of these places, it was the first time an American yacht had ever pulled into the harbor or the port, and oh my God, they saw cannibals and. And all kinds of people, and they were welcome on some islands. And this sounds like a know, real people throwing rocks at them in other islands. And, a different world. And you know, they went to the Galapagos before people went to the Galapagos. They went to all these islands. I, I interviewed this one woman, uh, Julie Nicholson. Julie, so of all the islands you visited, what was the most interesting? She says Bali. Ah, why Bali? I ask. Well. I fell in love with the lead dancer in the temple, she says. In fact, she goes on, I ended up getting off the boat for a month, and when the boat came back, I got back on the boat. She pauses, my camera's running, and I'm thinking, I don't say anything here. And she says, but two years later, the dancer showed up in Boston, 
and the romance wasn't as good in Boston as it had been in Bali. And then she <laughs> says, oh, you're not putting this in a film, are you? Oh, yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> but it, it just, uh, what a great story. Yeah, you can just see her going back in time when she was 18 years old. And she, I was on the fifth voyage and how, it, you know, right after World War II, and she's thinking about this guy that she met, and then the guy shows up in Boston. Oh, dear. <laughs> this isn't good. So. <laughs> what a t- tremendous well, story. Well, to pay for it. It, it, was, it was a money-making venture. Uh, I never did find out how much the kids' families paid, but I could tell that the kids were probably pretty well off. Um, oh, gosh. That well, they could what, afford what 18 impetus? months. Why did and they, they bring children along on these, wherever they ended up. on these sailing boys? And, uh, I mean, was you know, this they, a they went out altruistic of, um, thing? Or was Gloucester, it? Massachusetts. Okay. And they returned to Gloucester always exactly on time. And, uh, and, you know, one one of the kids that went was Sterling Hayden. Sterling became quite an actor uh, in the films, and you might recall he was in The Godfather. And the, when the Corleone boy goes into the bar with the gun, he's he's the guy at the table who's the police chief that gets shot. <laughs> so, and that was Ster, Sterling uh, was uh, on Yankee as one of the crew. And there's all kinds of stories. There was a senator a state senator for Virginia that did. So there was an author that did it. There was a guy that ended up being an admiral in the Navy that did it. Uh, so they all had their different stories. And how, how, how lucky okay. that this footage was sitting here. And uh, like I said, it took me a year to digitize it all. And then once I got going with it, it really was another year to piece it all together and then to consolidate it down. The film's 77 minutes, an hour and 17 minutes long. Yes. Yes. Yes, I did. It, it, Mystic helped me, and Google search helped me, and you know some of these people. You know, who the hell are you? Why are you calling me? And then I would say, well, I want to. I'm doing a film on Irving and Elected Johnson's trips and Yankees. Right. Did, somebody, you have a, oh, did you have a tough time where can we do finding the, interview? I'm available. the they were kids so that did, I say the kids, the, the, the 70 and 90 year olds that uh, sailed so that, on the that ship? Really made it fun. And then you know that now I you know I sit there and. They're ready to go for four or five hours, and you know I basically needed about five minutes per person for the film. Uh, so anyway, that it, yeah, so it was hard to find them, but once I did, like I said, I, I got to eight of them, and that seemed to be about enough. Between the eight, the youngest was 16 and the oldest uh, was 24. So, the, yeah, well, they, they, right, they were high school to college kids. And, you know, that, you a know, lot it seems, of them, I, if you called me, school, if that had been my year, experience year and a half as a, off to do as a this, child, they and, went on to and college. How old were these guys career. when they did this? Were like they, I said, like it teenagers? was life defining for all of them. And they got themselves in all kinds of weird things. See, that was they smart on the parents, getting rid of those teenagers. Uh, I remember those the volcano teenagers. That Send them away for 18 months. They were there and you know, caught all kinds of fish. And most of them weren't sailors before they got on the boat. But by the time they got home, they were really skilled at it. I have. Um I've sailed the Pacific and I've gone south and uh, the Orient and, you know, I've been to Singapore and Australia and New Zealand. And, yeah, I mean, there's it, it, sure. challenging waters. Well, have you sailed personally uh, any of the Irving waters that you know, these he also voyages took? took? trade routes, which the clipper ships did, so they were often reaching and going downwind, not so much upwind in these old schooners that they had. And... Uh, one of the Yankees, the sister ship is named Tabor Boy, and it's um, at the Tabor Academy in Marion, Massachusetts. A sister, exact replica, and it's a it's called a topsail schooner, uh, and it, you know it sails pretty well. Yeah. 
wouldn't it be cool? That's a really, I hadn't thought about that. Very good idea to get a vessel and recreate it. And because all the log books are there. And in the film, what I try to do is only visit. You know, it sounds like it would be a fantastic. Each of their destinations uh, one time. Tour. So sailing each tour. segment is around seven that you or could, eight. Uh, you know, go and say, hey, let's trips. recreate so seven or eight the voyage of trip, Irving and, and Electra Johnson. Uh, he was in Hawaii when uh, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. He was there in Pearl Harbor. And, uh, and I did find an interview with Irving Johnson and uh, included that. And I also included some of the footage that he shot on the Peking when it rounded Cape Horn uh, in 100 knots of wind. And this knucklehead, Irving, went up the rigging with a black and white 8 millimeter movie camera, didn't tell the captain he was doing it, 100 knot winds, and went and shot the decks awash with water. And thank goodness he did it, because it's really remarkable footage. And I have that in the film, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I have that in there. And Irving had this goal to sail on every type of vessel. And one of them was Shamrock, the boat that challenged for the America's Cup in 1930. And he got aboard Shamrock to uh, take it back to Europe. And while he was in Europe, he met this girl. And I'm sure, I'm sure Alexa, that's in the film as well. Smith College graduate, and they eventually got married and sailed across. And she was enthusiastic, and that's why they got this vessel and uh, organized these trips. So, so it's a, a fun film. Yeah, it hasn't been shown before. Um, so it's at two, it's at noon on Saturday at Maryland Hall. Yes. Fantastic. Well, un unfurling the world will little, be showing. I don't know what is this a premiere? Yeah, I'll do a little round. At the Apple Film Festival. Yeah, it hasn't been shown before. Um, so it's at two. It's at noon on Saturday at Maryland Hall. And it's up in the main theater, so the seats are comfortable for you and everything else. It runs about seventy-seven minutes. This is part of the sailing showcase, and I'm sure that you're going to be there and answering questions and everything else on the end of that. Well, I do suggest that everybody go get your film passes, get your film tickets. You can get them at annapolisfilmfestival.org. I do recommend you get the passes. That's the easier way to go because you just zip right in and zip right out. And again, the Annapolis Film Festival coming into town April 4th, which is opening night through the 7th, which is Sunday. We'll have the best of the fest well, and thank everything you, John. else. Keep Always up a good the good time. work on Iron and Annapolis. And if anybody Appreciate needs a note it. to get out of work, let me know because I will uh, – I'm a big advocate for playing hooky for those two days and yes. uh, go watching some films. And I can't wait to see Unfurling the World uh, directed and uh, actually put all together yes. by Gary Jobson, local right here in Annapolis. And I want to thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Well, thank you, John. And keep up the good work on Iron Annapolis. Appreciate it. Hey, Gary, you know, it's funny. You talked about the um, Bally and the, the, ro the romance. The store on Main Street, the wooden map store, yes. the woman that owns that, she has almost the identical story. She was um, from, I want to think, somewhere in Scandinavia, working for a travel company doing as, as a tour director, t guiding a tour down. And she was in Bali, and this guy rolls up in a sailboat. They went out on a date huh. and had a, beach, a wonderful time That's on the beach. Story. And he says, hey. You, you want to finish sailing around the world with me? And she's, she's like, shit, okay. So she gets word back to this travel agency, you know, in, you know, in Europe. Says, yeah, I'm not going to be leading this group anymore, like, starting now, because I'm going to, and, and they're married. And, and they, here we are talking about <laughs> all these years later. Yeah. It's, it, it, it is. I mean, you know, you look I'm at hoping uh, you, make it. you know okay. how the water brings everybody together in sailing right. and everything else. It's funny you say Thank that, you. you know, they met each other and both had a love for sailing. And, uh, you know, what how does Irving and Electa get put together in uh, in the middle of <laughs> in the middle of Europe and turn into this? I can't wait. This is going to be a real fascinating film to see. I, I absolutely will. Have a great weekend, Gary. Happy Easter. Bye bye.